Hello people, welcome to my channel, the new source for coronavirus trends and much needed healthcare innovation. Last week, I covered some of the basic facts of the novel coronavirus pandemic. Today, I will focus on three urgent topics. Did the coronavirus make the zoonotic jump from bats to humans? Or was it accidentally released by China? And are the Chinese telling us the truth about COVID-19's real mortality rate? I know some of you have little time to watch the entire video, so what if I told you now that a Chinese virology lab accidentally released the virus in Wuhan around October 2019? Would you keep watching? And how about if I showed you now how Chinese authorities continue to suppress the real number of COVID-19 cases, which may be far higher than anyone could ever have imagined? Would you be intrigued? Chinese authorities reported that 41 hospital patients had been identified with a novel coronavirus infection by January 2nd. The official line published in The Lancet on January 24th is that 66% of 41 patients had been exposed to the Huanan seafood market, popularly known as the zoo, where wild animals were sold live. But as I discussed in last week's video, South China Morning Post reported on March 14th that it had viewed a government report tracing patient zero to November 17th, when a 55-year-old became the first person to contract the novel coronavirus. Besides age, we know little else about this patient. The Wall Street Journal cites Wuhan Municipal Health Commission public notices announcing the first confirmed case a person surnamed Chen, who fell sick on December 8th, but had fully recovered and been discharged from the hospital. That person denied going to the Huanan market, it said. The BBC, however, reports that the first sufferer actually fell ill on December 1, a week earlier than official claims. Professor Wu Wenjuan, Co-author of the Lancet report told the BBC that patient zero was a pensioner in his 70s who was bedridden due to a stroke, but who also had no connection to the Huanan seafood market prior to falling ill. If that's not confusing enough, rumors circulating on WeChat and Weibo suggested the real patient zero was actually a, guess what, female virologist called Huanan Yanling who worked at, guess where, the Wuhan Institute of Virology, which is just 14 kilometers or 9 miles from the Huanan seafood market. A coincidence? As detectives like to tell us, there are no such things as coincidences in a criminal investigation. The Wuhan Institute of Virology is China's first biosafety level 4 lab certified in 2017 to work on the world's most dangerous pathogens. The fact that there is only one microbiology lab in all of China that handles advanced viruses like the novel coronavirus and which is located in the epicenter of the epidemic is simply too coincidental. One day later, another Weibo user who claimed to be a researcher at the institute named Chen Quan Zhao accused the institute's director, Wan Yanyi, of leaking the virus. You know what they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. Beijing has had four, count them, four known accidental leaks of the SARS virus in recent years. So it's quite feasible that the Wuhan coronavirus strain accidentally leaked out. Another troubling sign, Major General Chen Wai, the People's Liberation Army's top expert in biological warfare, was dispatched to Wuhan in January to help contain the outbreak. This anecdotal evidence aligns closely with the observations by Dan Sorotkin of the Harvard to the Big House blog, who posits that the novel coronavirus may be a bioengineered strain most likely released into the public by accident. The earlier November 17 timeline also matches an analysis by Christian Anderson, an associate professor at Scripps Research, who studied 27 publicly shared novel coronavirus genome sequences and found that the virus began spreading somewhere around October 1. 
the official explanation that the novel coronavirus emerged from the Wanan seafood market, where Chinese horseshoe bats may have made an interspecies jump requires completely ignoring everything we know about how viruses transfer between species. For one, when viruses jump, they're not immediately virulent enough to cause people to collapse on the street. Why kill your host right away? Then there's the muddy connection. The first three known cases on December 1 and 2 were not linked to the market. Neither were 11 of the 41 cases covered in the Landsat study. This early data suggests an evolving virus that surfaced earlier. The fact that the novel coronavirus emerged in close proximity to the only BSL-4 virology lab in China, which was coincidentally staffed with two Chinese scientists who had previously worked at a US lab that bioengineered an incredibly virulent strain of bad coronavirus, makes the accidental release of a bioengineered strain highly probable. Think about it. There was no trace of the novel coronavirus before November 2019. Zoonotic jumps don't just magically happen. Certainly not a virus that is so incredibly adapted to humans that it is able to infect its victims undetected, spread undetected, then kill after more than enough time has passed to find multiple new hosts. But what makes an accidental release all the more likely and really troubling is the underreporting of coronavirus cases. The communist government has aggressively clamped down on news media and the internet, raising many questions. The Chinese regime originally claimed that there have been no new coronavirus infections since March 18th. Yet on March 20th, Cindy Wei posted this picture on Facebook commenting, new cases in Jiajun, Lishua Kang, city in Wuhan. Others have shared similar notices posted in several Wuhan developments. Epoch Times reviewed internal government documents that reported 91 newly diagnosed patients in Wuhan on March 14th, while China's National Health Commission only reported 19 cases on the same day. Authorities also claimed that fewer patients resulted in the shutting down of field hospitals set up inside stadiums, expo centers, and large gyms like this one, because there no longer was need for them. On March 19th, however, a construction worker shared a video of a new makeshift hospital built inside a stadium in suburban Wuhan. After another night, our mission is almost complete, the man says. A new makeshift hospital will be in operation soon. Here's yet another example. The Chinese report 81,591 coronavirus cases, with 60,324 recovered patients and only 3,160 deaths for a simplified recovery and mortality rate of 73 and 4% respectively. In comparison, Italy has a recovery and mortality rate of 12% and 10%. Really, Beijing? A 73% recovery rate after people were seen falling dead all over the place? Who are you kidding? Our willing suspension of disbelief was shocked, however, by the latest figures from China Mobile. As you know, China Mobile is China's largest mobile phone carrier with more than 940 million subscribers. During 2019, China Mobile consistently added new subscribers each month, peaking with 3.7 million new subs in December. In January and February 2020, however, the company suddenly began losing subscribers, 862,000 in January and a whopping 7.2 million in February for a massive total loss of 8.1 million in just two months. China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology confirmed this huge subscriber loss on March 19, when it reported that the total number of Chinese mobile phone subscribers dropped 21 million. 
There simply is no plausible way to explain this massive decline, especially since the Chinese government tracks phone use. Since 2010, China has required all users to register their phones with a real ID. And on December 1, phone users also had to confirm their identity with a facial scan, so a theoretical variance due to a widespread identity scam can be ruled out. Now you also have to realize that you simply can't avoid having a cell phone in China, because not only are Chinese people's bank accounts and social security accounts bundled with cell phone plans, but the Chinese government now requires that all Chinese use their cell phones to generate a health code. Only Chinese with a green health code are allowed to move around in China. Now you know why it's impossible for someone to cancel their cell phone in China. And that means that some 21 million users have disappeared in just two months, a number corroborated by China Mobile's data, which is a publicly traded company that has to comply with investor disclosure. Even if most of these phone users disappear due to extenuating circumstances and say only 10% died due to the coronavirus, that means that more than 2 million people died in China, not 3,000. To fight online disinformation, I have provided links to support all the data cited above in the description below. If you like my crusade to uncover the truth, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified of each new video. I hope you people have a great day. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching China Freedom Fighters.